With each new video game announcement, fans have learned to take them with a grain of salt. Because while many eventually become a reality, or are assured they will in the future, some of even the most anticipated games, regardless of development stage or influence, never see the light of day. In 1998, shortly after the release of Rare's Diddy Kong Racing for the Nintendo 64, the company responsible for some of the system's best hits immediately began work on their next project. And while initially starting out as a Jurassic Park-inspired sequel to Diddy Kong, the game evolved into what would be their most ambitious title. I think I'll have that on the tour. Dinosaur Planet was set in an immersive prehistoric world, which included a host of original characters, creatures, and a fantasy-based story. The game would also feature both a male and female protagonist, allowing players to switch between characters for different portions of the game via swapstone locations. Dinosaur Planet also intended to show off the true power of the Nintendo 64, utilizing the recently developed 512 megabyte cartridges to feature live voice acting and enhanced graphics. It's all right, Tricky. I can look for your father. And at E3 2000, the game was revealed in spectacular fashion and slated for a release later that year. But shortly after the event, after having seen footage of the mostly finished game and believing that the male protagonist Saber bore a striking resemblance to Fox McCloud, Nintendo Shigeru Miyamoto suggested the game's story and characters be retooled into a Star Fox title. And while members of Rare's creative team were hesitant, they also saw the potential of using the Star Fox license and went along with his idea. Resistance is futile. During these changes, while it was initially denied by both Rare and Nintendo, it was decided to rework the game as a launch title for the upcoming Nintendo GameCube. And in late 2002, the game was released as Star Fox Adventures. I am Fox McCloud, lead pilot of the Star Fox team. I am Saber. Royal Knight from the planet Animus. And while many aspects of Dinosaur Planet's original gameplay elements and plot devices survived the Star Fox overhaul, changes included the removal of one-third of the levels and the original purpose of the Swapstone locations, reducing the female protagonist to little more than a scantily clad damsel in distress, only playable in the game's prologue. <laughs> The game also marked Rare's last title for Nintendo, who was shortly after purchased by Microsoft as a first-party game developer. And while Dinosaur Planet was never completed, fans continue to hope that a ROM or demo version of the nearly finished game will one day surface. At E3 2002, the highly ambitious Xbox game BC was finally revealed to the public and quickly became one of the most anticipated titles for the system. Initially set to ship in 2003, the open-world RPG adventure was being co-developed by Intrepid Computer Entertainment and Lionhead Studios, in which players would explore, hunt, and develop survival skills to raise mankind up from the bottom of the evolutionary ladder. However, BC was also being developed alongside the highly ambitious and anticipated game Fable, and problems arose when the decision was made to push the Xbox 360's launch date by nine months ahead of schedule, in order to beat the upcoming PlayStation 3 to the market. And as it was becoming apparent that both Fable and BC would not be completed on schedule, meaning one or both would release even closer to the end of the original Xbox's life cycle, despite being nearly 75% complete, the decision was made to cancel cancel BC for the original Xbox, and divert all resources to completing Fable. And while work initially began on an Xbox 360 version of BC, with the success and critical acclaim of Fable, Lion had decided to instead develop a sequel for the new system. Fable 2. And for nearly a decade, only scraps and low-quality footage seemed to exist of BC. But in 2015, game preservationist Past to Present was able to acquire a playable demo, providing the first high-quality look into the world of BC, which demonstrated the game's advanced weather system and day and night cycle, as well as a host of other game elements previously unseen by the public, allowing fans to glimpse the ambitious Xbox game that could have been. 
In 2013, after nearly seven years of anticipation, Aliens Colonial Marines released to scathing reviews, massive disappointment, and allegations of false advertisement. But this was far from the first alien-based game to have a disappointing outcome. In the year 2000, development began on an Aliens title of the same name, which EA Games debuted to the public at E3 2001, with a planned release on the PlayStation 2 that coming fall. But the game missed its initial launch date, and shortly after being reassigned to November the following year, it was placed on indefinite hold, and officially cancelled in October of 2002. No! However, Alien fans wouldn't have to wait long for another attempt, as Sega announced in December of 2006 that they had acquired the electronic rights of the Alien franchise, and had a first-person shooter as well as an Alien-based RPG in development, later revealed as Aliens Colonial Marines and Aliens Crucible. Thank you, that will be all. Unfortunately, after over two years of work, and Obsidian CEO later saying that Aliens Crucible was practically finished, and looked as if it was ready to ship, in February of 2009, rumors began circulating about the Alien game's delay, and by June of the same year, it was officially cancelled. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Several years later, footage from an early build of Aliens Crucible made its way online, and while far from polished, it gave fans a glimpse of what might have been had Sega not pulled the plug, and in an alternate reality, chose to complete Obsidian's RPG. While the track record of Batman-based video games has been spotty at best, in 2009, Rocksteady's Batman Arkham Asylum was released to critical acclaim, spawning a number of successful sequels, and is considered by many to be the definitive Batman game series. But only a few years earlier, another attempt was being made at an equally ambitious Batman title. What are you? I'm Batman. This take on the Caped Crusader was directly inspired by the 1989 one-shot DC comic called Gotham by Gaslight. And while little is known about the game's specifics, it appears development began sometime in 2008, and would have seen Batman in a gothic-inspired 1989 Victorian England on a mission to track down the infamous Jack the Ripper. And in early 2009, the game was pitched to THQ, but depending on the source, THQ either came aboard but was unsuccessful in securing the Rights, or was unimpressed by the pitch and passed on the potential game. The answer is no. Sorry. Thanks, everybody. Keep up the good work. Disappointingly, development on the project ended and was unable to get off the ground. However, in January of 2012, concept art of Gotham by Gaslight appeared on the blog of the proposed game's graphic designer, and just a month later, footage surfaced of the once-in-development Batman title. And according to one source, the game was actually much further along than what can be seen in the video, but due to legal reasons, additional footage will most likely never see the light of day. So much like the once promising but ultimately cancelled 2008 Dark Knight-based entry, Gotham by Gaslight will endure as another potentially great Batman game. In October of 2005, EA Games announced that a three-game partnership deal had been made with director Steven Spielberg, two of which were revealed at E3 2007, codenamed as LMNO and PQRS. And you announced LMNO, PQRS. Uh, can you tell us a bit about what that partnership's going to bring to gamers at home? Sure. Um, we've got two projects with Steven right now. And while PQRS eventually turned into boom blocks for the Nintendo Wii, it was the mysterious LMNO that garnered the most attention, with a tagline of can a computer game make you cry, hearkening back to the company's 1983 advertisement. Initially planned for a release in 2008, LMNO was to be a parkour-inspired action-adventure, with a heavy emphasis on emotional engagement between the player and an NPC named Eve, a mute-like alien human from the future, on the run from the FBI. The game was to be only two to three hours in length, emphasizing replayability and quality over quantity, as it would showcase Eve with advanced AI that could learn, adapt, and change the way you play the game, making each additional playthrough a completely different experience. I don't want to get the EA police on me, I can't say too much, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was very uh, 
ambitious. And that was the problem. Mm -hmm. Described as a revolutionary game changer, its ambitiousness ultimately led to its downfall, reportedly trying to do too much for its time, leading to development struggles and delays. Problems only worsened amidst EA's layoffs in 2008, which saw the game's development team reduced, and given a new executive producer to rework the game into a more conventional action adventure, allegedly to avoid competition with the similar parkour action style of another in development EA title. I want to show you a new game, Mirror's Edge, featuring a heroine named Faith. Production limped on for a bit longer, but in late 2010, EA announced that the project codenamed LMNO was officially cancelled. However, with titles such as the action drama Heavy Rain and companion interaction-based Bioshock Infinite, which initially featured a mute companion as well, it's easy to see that the influences of the unfinished project continue to this day. So what about you? If you could bring back to life any cancelled or unreleased game, which would it be? As always, thank you guys and gals so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.